Bring in the patient. Today I'm working again on the base of the Beetlejuice house. Okay, I gotta put it back down, hold on. <laughs> I've worked on this base in previous videos where I worked on the Lost Souls door in the hallway with all the other doors. But I realized that Beetle Gust, or August, is really only five months away, which in miniature making time is not that far. And during Beetle Gust, I want to create all the characters that end up in the waiting room. But first, I need to actually create the waiting room. So I'm going to be starting that project today. Because it is very iconic, I want to make sure I spend as much time on it as I can to make sure it looks right. Even if people don't really know the Beetlejuice movie very well, they know what the waiting room looks like. So for today, I'm really just going to be laying things out and I hope to get at least one part of the waiting room done, mainly the turnstile that Barbara and Adam enter through when they're coming into the waiting room. So without further ado, let's get started. If you're new to my project, what you're looking at right now is one of the four rooms that's contained within the base. These are all going to be the netherworld scenes that you see in the Beetlejuice movie. To start out, I need to create the floor, and so I'm going to be making a pattern. I do this by laying down different sizes of scrap paper and then taping them together and trying to make sure I get it as close as possible to the correct size. Next, I'm going to use some drawing tools to figure out where the different parts of the waiting room are going to be. I need to include the turnstile that Barbara and Adam go through when they first enter. I need to add Miss Argentina's office, which there is like an opening where she can look through. And then there's also going to be a set of doors that Barbara and Adam exit through on their way to Juno's office. So all of these things need to be rather thin so that they fit within the space. And I'm still trying to kind of get a wonky look because all of the scenes in the netherworld are supposed to just make you feel a little bit off balance, I think. To make sure I have enough room in the waiting room area for all the furniture, I'm going to use some pieces I already have in my collection to lay out some ideas. The green couches and the chairs were donated by Emily, thank you so much, and they may actually end up being in the scene in the end. I may end up painting them, I'm not quite sure yet. The blue flower couch actually belonged to my grandmother, and I will probably be replacing that with something else, but for right now it's helping me figure out how many places I can sit comfortably in the waiting room area. And so far, I think Beetlejuice is pretty happy with the comfort level of the furniture. The waiting room has a black and white checkered floor, just like the hallway did that I previously created. I am going to be doing this one a little bit differently. I did the previous floor with the airbrush, which worked really well, but I really didn't enjoy taping off each and every square. And I don't know what that is, but let's get that out of here. So this time I'm going to be painting the floor by hand. I transferred my pattern onto some poster board, which is a little bit thicker and it's going to be easier to paint on. And I'm using a little thumbtack just to poke through all of the areas that I need to transfer so that I know where my walls are going to be. This is going to help me know how to draw my checkered pattern onto the floor. It's supposed to be a square-ish room. It's obviously not going to be perfectly square, but there is a 90 degree angle between Miss Argentina's office and the back wall. And I feel like having that angle at least will help it seem more like a room and not so much like a stage. Just like I did on the previous floor, I'm adding my lines at different angles, trying to get different shapes within the floor. This makes it really confusing, and so I make sure to add an X on the ones that I am going to be painting black. I am going to paint white, even though the poster board is white, it's not a bright white, and then if I do have to do any touch-ups, I won't be able to match the color of the poster board perfectly, so it's better to go ahead and paint those squares first. I didn't have to be too careful when painting the white squares because the black paint is going to cover up any mess. 
I'm now adding washi tape on either side of each column and I'm going to work on one column of squares at a time. I'm adding white paint on the place where the washi tape overlaps the white squares and the black squares. So basically the entire column. This is going to cause any excess paint that's going to go under the tape to go under there first before I paint the black. That's going to protect my white squares that are next to my black squares. Now doing it this way, I do need to perfectly or not so perfectly as you can see, try to create straight lines on the horizontal. My vertical lines will be very smooth because of the process I'm doing with the paint and the washi tape. However, the horizontal lines do end up being a little wiggly. But with the fact that this is a wonky floor and much of it will be covered up with dollhouse furniture in the end, I'm not too worried about it. And honestly, this floor took me much less time and less frustration than the previous one did. Here's how it's looking in the end. I went ahead and painted black on all of the places that were not going to have the checkered floor so I knew where the walls were going to be. I also coated it in a clear acrylic coating so I didn't accidentally scratch the paint. Now it's time to apply it. I'm going to be using some wood glue. I'm just going to add as much as I think I need and then scrape it flat with some mat board. It was very important to put heavy things on the floor while this was drying. Again, I did get a couple little warps in the paper. They're not too noticeable and will again be covered up with furniture. But ultimately this process of making the floor was pretty easy and I was even able to use the same process with the tape to paint the edge black and get a clean look. I've skipped through the part where I went through and made all of the cardboard template walls and that's because I showed that process when I was doing the hallway in the other section of the netherworld. So I'm just going to skip that and go right to showing you what I've done and then I'm going to start making these permanent walls out of foam board. This area over here is going to be where I add the turnstile that they actually enter the waiting room through. This is going to be the reception area where Miss Argentina is sitting and I'm going to have an opening, whoops, and I'm going to have an opening in the wall right here. And this is going to be their door out or their door that's going into Juno's office area. I put all the furniture back in and it's still working and I'm still happy with it. And then I also wanted to show you that I made this uh, ceiling piece that kind of angles down from this outer area all the way back to this doorway. And I think it kind of adds the wonky feeling you're supposed to get from the netherworld area. And it also goes along with the hallway which had a slanted and weird floor. Instead of doing that to the floor because I want everything to fit flat, I've decided to do that to the ceiling. So I'm hoping it gives the same feel but it's just slanting a different wall than I did before. So now I'm going to get my foam board and I'm slowly going to replace these pieces until I have some set walls. If you're wondering why I do my walls out of cardboard first before I do the foam board, it's because cardboard is recyclable and foam board is not. And so if I end up needing to cut a piece over and over and over again to make sure that it fits, especially when I'm dealing with weird angles, I feel a little bit better about using cardboard and then doing my final piece with foam board. This part of the wall in the movie has this kind of, um, I guess like wavy stuff over top and it looks like there are some two by fours or framing that it's sitting on top of. So that's what I'm going to be creating in this wall. It's not going to be 100% screen accurate. And during this video, I'm not going to have time to create the wavy bits. Hopefully that will come in the next waiting room installment. But I wanted to go ahead and get the walls as close as possible because then I'll know whether or not everything is fitting correctly. I'm just using some craft wood to cut them and glue them in place and again I'm trying to get some weird angles. Not everything has to be 90 degrees. And then I also did something similar for Miss Argentina's office wall because both of these walls have to work together so that I know they fit in place. I have to do these before I can get to the turnstile because the turnstile's position is based off of these walls. 
There was not a very smooth transition from the right side of the wall to the actual wood wall of the base, so I made a little sliver of foam board to go in there. I've got in a few of the foam board walls, but I am finding that I have a little bit of a dilemma because I can't glue these walls in yet because I still need to create an office behind here because this is where Miss Argentina is going to sit and then I still need to drill and put holes back there because there's going to be light coming from there. So I don't want to glue these in yet here. Let me turn the camera a bit. What I do want to do is try to create the turnstile which is going over here because this is where Barbara and Adam are going to enter into the waiting room. So I'm going to put a wall here on the side and I can go ahead and glue this piece in. This wall isn't going to be seen once everything's put together. But by gluing it in place, it's giving me the dedicated area I need to start creating the turnstile that is going to be over here. And I don't want to build these walls until I have something pretty secure so that I know that these walls are set in place. So it's a kind of a puzzle, it's kind of a trying to get things done in order, but then also not limiting myself <laughs> to where I can't get to the projects I need to once I'm ready. So all of that just to say, I'm going to glue this wall in place and that's it. But then I can work on the turnstile. So at least I have a plan. Before gluing this wall in place, I'm making sure that the walls I've already created are where I want them to be. I've taped them down so they don't move, and then I'm going to use a pencil to draw on the walls exactly where this is supposed to sit once the glue is drying. I'm going to add the glue without the wall there, and I'm trying to follow the line as best as I can. This wall does not perfectly touch all the walls, so I could only glue it in a few places. But if you've watched any of my videos, you know I've been doing this thing called dollhouse bandages is what I call them. But basically it's just a piece of paper that's folded in half and then I can add glue to both halves and it kind of becomes a bracket that glues the wall down. I did this on both sides of this wall because this is an incredibly important wall even though you won't see it in the end. It's kind of my anchor piece that everything else is going to be based off of, so I don't want it moving one bit. Now that it's secure, I can go ahead and add a layer of black acrylic paint. This is supposed to be kind of a dark void area behind the turnstile that really kind of makes it hard to see that there's nothing back there. We want it to be kind of a um, mystery of where Barbara and Adam are coming from. I added my cardboard pieces back and drew out what I thought would be the opening for the turnstile so I can go ahead and get those cut out of foam board and then install them. I also want to give my apologies if there's any weird camera angles or dark lighting in this video because it was a constant fight between me, the lights, the project, and the camera. Once I had gotten the turnstile walls cut out of foam board, I could start to figure out how they were going to fit and how I was going to get an entire turnstile into this small triangular space. I decided I was going to have this outside wall angle towards the viewer, and this is going to give me some room on the inside to include this little barbecue skewer which I am going to be using to create the turnstile itself. There's also these little prongs that go on the side that the turnstile rotates through, and those are just going to be shoved into the foam board. So this is the basic idea of what I'm going to create. Right now it's just being held by tension, but in the end I hope that it will actually turn on its own. Well, not on its own. It will actually turn, but you'll have to use your hand. As I said, these are barbecue skewers that I'm using. They're pretty cheap at the dollar store or at the grocery store. I'm using one long one and then I'm cutting several shorter ones and I'm gluing them together on wax paper. The first set was pretty easy to glue because I could just lay it flat, but when I went to add the second set, I'm going to have this in uh, three different sets, I had to prop it up on one side and then add the next one. This was, again, fairly easy, but then I had to get to the third set, and I didn't want to put any pressure on the previous ones because I'm still not done with the gluing process. They're just kind of initially glued. 
This time I propped it up on some wood and mat board and I'm going to be using the super glue plus tacky glue method where you add one to one side and one to the other and then they take hold pretty much immediately on contact. Using this method kept me from having to stand there and just hold it while it dried. Once everything's dry and attached, I'm going to go back and add even more tacky glue. I'm an over gluer and so I just want to make sure everything's stuck together as well as it can be. You'll notice in the movie that these turnstile arms, I guess I would call them, are not completely straight like metal ones would be if you saw them at a park or you know, wherever they happen to be, and they kind of have a little bit of a wave to them. So in order to get this effect, I'm going to take some string and wind it around each one of the arms. I'm also winding it around the center with more glue, which again is going to add more strength. To cover up the strings and the turnstile itself, I'm going to be using this Arteza outdoor paint. It kind of has this puffy paint effect where it will kind of fill in gaps and I think it's going to keep this from looking like a stick that's wrapped with string and look more like just a thing with bumpiness to it. That's what, that's my hope at least. I did two coats of this paint on the turnstile and then I also created the little prongs that are going on the side and then I made one long piece that is also part of the turnstile. There's a couple of them in the movie. I'm just going to have room to add one of the longer pieces. I don't really know what to call them. In order to make the turnstile turn, I'm going to use this little eyelet piece and or I could I could have used a bead but I found this and I thought it looked a little bit more industrial than a bead so I am going to mark on the floor in the ceiling where I want to install that I'm installing or just gluing down the eyelet on the bottom and then I'm just letting my turnstile rest against the wall I've already put the other eyelet on the top of the turnstile and then I added glue to the ceiling lifted the eyelet up until it touched the glue and when that was dry, the turnstile was being held in place by the two eyelets and could turn freely. Now I'm going to be marking on my wall where I'm going to be adding these little prongs that I mentioned earlier. I just used a craft blade to drill a little hole in the side of the foam board and then added glue and inserted them. Then I replaced the wall and made sure that the turnstile could still turn freely through the prongs. Once those two pieces were finished, I could work on this next wall. As you can see, the turnstile will not turn through the wall. And I also have this longer piece that I want to add and I just don't have a ton of room to do it. So I'm marking where the turnstile needs to open and I'm going to be doing a very shallow cut on this wall. It's going to need a wall behind it to keep it secure because the foam board would be very weak on its own but I did manage to fit in one of those longer pieces, which was my goal. So ultimately I'm very happy with how this is turning out and I'm so glad I was able to get it to turn. I feel like I have this area pretty well figured out. The only thing I'm struggling with is if I want to do lighting and if I want to have access to uh, say if I need to do any maintenance back here or say I drop something back there and it gets difficult to get back there or have a loose connection. Um, this whole setup is going to make it very difficult. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this wall segment removable. And I'm going to do that with magnets, just like I've done in other parts of the house. This will give me access to running electrical through this wall from Miss Argentina's space into here because this is supposed to glow green. I'll probably drill a hole through here, but then I'm going to put some strips with pin nails and magnets in this area. So hopefully this piece just kind of pops on and off whenever I need it to and it'll just become a little secret access area for when it's needed. Just like in my previous builds, I'm using pin nails that are embedded and then covered with paper in the foam board and this is going to sit just behind my wall. I'm going to do two pin nail sections at the top and one pin nail section at the bottom. 
Then I could add magnets into the back of the wall in the same manner where I embed them into the foam board and then I cover them with paper. The paper is to keep the magnets from coming out once it's connected to what it's attracted to. Sometimes it'll pull it out of the glue, so the paper helps with that. Once I had the magnet wall happily in place, I could go ahead and permanently put in this side wall. Now I'm showing you here that I do not have a perfectly cut piece. There are gaps there and it's a little bit hard to tell in the video. Some people ask me like, how do you cut your pieces perfectly? And I don't, I'm just really good at hiding my unperfectly cut areas. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a pattern with paper again, and I am going to cut that out in poster board, which is going to act as like a giant dollhouse band-aid that's going to go from the wood wall that has that curve. It's going to make a perfect corner, and then it's going to cover up the side wall that wasn't perfectly cut meeting the top and the bottom. There was also a little gap between the poster board and the foam board, so I'm going to be covering that up with another piece of paper, and I just keep doing that until I'm happy with the final smoothness or cohesiveness of the wall. Now that the walls are in place, I wanted to focus on at least one detail in this video, and of course it has to be the no exit sign that is above the turnstile. I used my laser cutter to cut out the words no exit and I made sure to leave that little O in there so I could attach it and make sure that it looked right or it looked similar to the one in the movie. I'm using some plastic that came from somewhere and a piece of plastic went flying. I can't tell you how many times this has happened. There is a hole in the center of this base which is for the wiring once the house is all built and I keep getting hole in ones with things that I need so I have to go back in and fish it out. Once I had my plastic piece back, I could go ahead and sand it on both sides. I want the back piece, I'm going to need two pieces, I want the back piece to be kind of fuzzy or frosted and then the front is going to be clear. This is going to help diffuse the green light so you can't see perfectly what's behind the sign. I made sure to cut out and add the circle back into the middle of the no once I had had it glued onto the plastic. I cut it down to size. I'm leaving a little bit of a border because I do need to insert this into a box that's going to be installed above the turnstile. The second piece of plastic, which is going to remain clear, is going to be glued on top of the black cardstock that I laser cut. It's basically sandwiching the cardstock in between the two pieces of plastic. It will take a while for this glue to dry because it's in between plastic pieces, but it will eventually dry. I cut the clear piece of plastic to the same shape as the frosted one that's behind, and now it's ready to create the box. To do this, I'm going to be using black mat board and black cardstock, so it cuts down on how much painting I need to do. I cut a long piece that's about an eighth inch thick, and I just cut it to size so that it would fit as a box all around the back side of the plastic pieces. Once that dried, I took some very thin strips of black cardstock, folded those in half to act as little brackets, and then I put those all around the edge to finish up framing my sign. Here you can see the cardstock versus the mat board. The mat board's a little bit lighter. You can see how it overlapped from the front to the side. This is going to keep my plastic in place. To install it on the wall, I'm going to trace out where I want the sign to sit, and then I'm going to be cutting a hole that's smaller than the rectangle that I traced so that the light can go through the back of the wall into the sign and be seen from the front. I sanded the face of the foam board just slightly and then I could glue the sign in place. I may have to tape it off later when I do the finishes on the walls, but I wanted to go ahead and see how it looked and make sure I was happy with it. So now that that's finished, you can see how the light behind the wall is going to shine through the exit sign, and hopefully I can get it to shine green, which is what it needs to be. Now it can be magnetized back into place, and we can play around with the lights. I may be wrong, but I do feel like this is probably the most complicated part of the waiting room, so I'm glad I got it out of the way. 
Now I'm going to trace a small hole on the center wall, which is going to be my wire hole that's going to run through Miss Argentina's office back to the center area where eventually I will be drilling a hole. This is where the lights can come through into the turnstile area. They're going to kind of snake around the inside of the walls so that they're hidden from view and eventually they can light up this area. I am just temporarily putting these in place with masking tape. Eventually it will be much more permanent, but I don't have everything else in place as far as like the rest of the room. So this is just a quick view into what I hope it will look like. I plan to do a whole video in the future on the electrical part of this process, so stay tuned for that. So this is going to be the end of part one, and in the future I need to work on the walls, I need to make Miss Argentina's office, I need to make that back wall, and I need to do all the furniture and accessories. The furniture will probably just be a repaint, but the accessories are going to be really fun to create. So that's all I have for you today on the Beetlejuice waiting room. There is a lot more to do. I'm hoping I can finish the entire waiting room in about three episodes so that everything's ready for when Beetle Gust begins. I had a couple houses come in for the attic diorama, so I'm going to share those with you now. This first house was so incredibly small and detailed. I was amazed at how much detail was in there for its size. I had to put my hand in there so you could see just how small it was. And this next one I had to zoom out for because it came in its own special box, which I just had to show. It had so many amazing pictures on the side of different characters from the movie, and they're actually uh, sculpted. They're like uh, carved into the side of the box, which was amazing. So that's not even the house. That's just the box that the house came in. The house itself, again, is so small and tiny, and this one lights up, which is so cool. Thank you so much to everybody who sent in a attic diorama house. They are so cool to see all together. At some point I'm going to have to do a, like a little show and tell to show all the houses. I know for a fact I have enough to fill up the diorama, but if you still want to participate, I am going to be placing houses that don't make it onto the diorama around the house in different places, and I'm even thinking of doing like a tiny house display hidden in a wall or in the base somewhere. So there's still time to participate if you want to. If you want to learn more about that, I will put a link to the video where I explain everything in the description box below the title. I also quickly wanted to say thank you so much for the support I received on my most recent community post where I said I'm taking a little extra time for my videos and just posting whenever they're ready. I love sharing my projects and my videos with you, so I don't plan on stopping that anytime soon. I just need a little bit more time in my schedule to get things done and not be a completely just stressed out person. So if you're only following me here on YouTube but you want to know when videos are coming or what I'm up to, you can find all of my social media in the description box below. Also, my Patreons get two updates a week no matter what's going on, so if you're interested in Patreon, you can check that out too. I also have an email list, which is of course free. You can sign up for that and the email goes out every time I upload a video or go live. Thank you again for all the support. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know which character in the waiting room scene is your favorite and which one you're looking forward to seeing me create the most. I'm not sure which one I'm excited for yet. All of them. <laughs> I hope you all have an amazing week and I will see you in the next one. Bye. La, 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 la. and which one you're looking forward to seeing created, seeing, let me know which one you're, let me know. <laughs> uh, <okay>. <sighs> <laughs>